Hi there, parents. Deacon John Wilson, Education Enrichment Director for West Sands Church. And I'm going to, this is my weekly parent video to parents, I'm going to call that. This week, I want to talk about Juneteenth and how, what we should be telling our children. What does that holiday indicate that we should be telling our children? And what I want to say to you uh, as my Juneteenth gift, uh, and I'm going to talk about the history of it a little bit, give you a little background. Stand by. I'll be right with you. Here's a little overview timeline of, for the freeing of black slaves in America. You'll see where I'm going with this really soon. I'll do issues of Juneteenth in just a moment as well. Let's take a look at this. First of all, in 1565, we had the first permanent Spanish settlement. And yes, there were slaves there. We don't know exactly how many. Some say 20, some say up to 60, but these are the first slaves uh, that were bought to America uh, and they were bought by the Spanish. I mean, shortly after, I mean, 100 years later, less than 100 years later, the Spanish banned the slave trade, but uh, they did bring slaves here to the first permanent colony, which is St. Augustine, Florida, and then the first Spanish settlement had black slaves. In the 1600 to 1700, many Native Americans were made slaves by the English colonists. I think some of the Spanish colonists, Spanish did it as well, uh, but uh, it was mostly the English that were enslaving Native Americans. 1619, uh, August, Angolan Africans landed in what is now Fort Monroe. I don't say arrived. Because arrived means they came on their own, but they were enslaved. They were slaves. By the way, you notice I don't say enslaved. I think it's too passive. I think slaves is much more accurate. I want you to feel the evil of what was done. Make a person slave. Um, anyway, but you can call them enslaved. I'm not upset with you. July 4th, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was signed and sparked all northern colonies to free their slaves. In fact, the last date was Vermont in 1804. That one after another, even during the, during the Revolutionary War, they freed their slaves. So there were a bunch of free slaves running around the north. Not a bunch, but enough. In fact, some of the great early Americans uh, were freed slaves. Phyllis Wheatley in Philadelphia was a freed slave. Um, there were a lot of black spies and people who worked with General Washington during the Revolutionary War. They were black slaves. They were black slaves, former black slaves, but they were freed blacks. I should say they were freed blacks. There's others too, but that's not the purpose of this video. 1793, the cotton gin was successfully built and manufactured. It was created in 1791 by Eli Whitney, and it ignited a huge influx of Black African slaves from the, to the South because they could produce more cotton all of a sudden, and then you needed slaves to do the work to pick the cotton and the other essential work. So the horrible institution of slavery moved forward, ignited by the cotton gin, ironically. I can say a lot about all this. I love history. And some of you might not notice, but I am a history buff. I always tell people I became a history expert during the pandemic with all the books I listened to about history. <clears throat> there are 3.5 to 4 million were here by the start of the Civil War, which is 1861 to 1865. Now, I don't want to focus on the war, but the Civil War, I could prove it, and maybe I'll do a separate video if you want me to, to prove it to you historically that the Civil War was fought over slavery, not states' rights. Now, states' rights was some of the trigger issue, but every state that seceded from the Union in their constitutions and their documents, they mentioned slavery. And uh, Abraham Lincoln was very, very aware that he was fighting a war to free the Black slaves. By 1863, he knew. 1862, he suspected. He had it figured out by 1863. So, in fact, January 1st, 1863, was written in mid-1862, right before the Battle of Antietam, 
And I, I don't want to get into Civil War history, but when the North won that battle, or it's perceived they had won the battle, this is when the decision was made. That was in late September, that battle. It was signed by Abraham Lincoln, and listen to what it did. It freed the slaves in the South. With some interesting exceptions, like the states of Maryland and Delaware, that were not in rebellion, but there were slaves. They were not freed till later. States like Tennessee that were captured early in the war were free states. They were actually still slaves. Um, it, was free, it freed the slaves in the states that were in rebellion in the South. You'd think it would be the other way around. Remember, it didn't have to be because in the North, the slaves were free. But not in Maryland and Delaware because Maryland and Delaware were kind of like on that border. June 19th, 1865, there became an enforcement of the Emancipation Proclamation onto Texas. When I think it was 3,000 federal troops landed near Houston, the Galveston area, effectively freeing over the next few days and weeks 250,000 slaves in Texas. And you need to know there was a lot of political machinations because Texas wanted to come back and join the Union. And this was kind of condition that they didn't cause any trouble. There was no trouble. The slaves were all free. Now, a lot of the slaves had not heard they were free. So a lot of white folks were keeping them enslaved because they didn't know. I have more to say about that in a minute. It was the most remote state in the United States at that point. So they didn't get the news as readily of what happened in 1863 certainly wasn't a news event in the South, right? They're probably very angry because you're freeing the slaves in the Southern states. But in case you're interested, finally in December 1865, later in the year, the 13th Amendment, which was being ratified at the time of Juneteenth, June 19th is Juneteenth, you might know that. The 13th Amendment became law and made slavery illegal permanently in the United States. You needed a, an amendment, many people believe, because it wasn't clear in the Constitution. All right, let's continue. Let's talk about the leg legacy of Juneteenth. What about the legacy of Juneteenth? March 2021, June 19th, was made a federal holiday uh, in, the, in the wake of the Floyd murder uh, and the subsequent activities around it. That's another subject for another video, but I mean, I ever get to that. Because there's some interesting things we've learned about it since then. Uh, so June 19th was made a federal holiday in March of 2021. It's highly celebrated, has always been. In Texas and later throughout the whole South, it always been celebrated. The Great Migration spread the celebration throughout the northern and western cities. The Great Migration, the movement of Blacks from the Jim Crow South into the northern cities and the western cities is the greatest migration, and we think, inside of a country in world history. Uh, something like 60% of all Blacks in the South move into northern cities and western cities. So, of course, they brought their traditions with them, which included Juneteenth. You all may have relatives that were celebrating Juneteenth. I know I did, uh, even in the D.C. area. They were celebrating Juneteenth, because I remember it before July 4th. Now, a lot of people want us to substitute it for July 4th, but I wish you wouldn't do that. I wish you'd celebrate both, because they both were created for different reasons. What happened, what happened on Juneteenth, 1865? Listen closely. Though it happened two months after the Civil War ended, and the slaves were freed in January 1863, Texas slaves still understood that they were slaves. They weren't enslaved. They were, they were slaves until they thought they were no longer slaves. I think that has terrific relevance today. Some of us to this day in 2024, almost 160 years later, I hear in the news, I hear people talking, and they still feel that they're enslaved. We're not enslaved. Come on off that plantation. Don't be thinking you need anything from the white man. This is a free country. You can get what you need. 
Too many black folks are, are basing their success on what white people will give them. They think they're old. But I'm telling you what, young person and whoever's listening to this, the message of Juneteenth, which I now respect because of it that day, is that slavery is over. You didn't know it. Come on out. It reminds me of how the Israelites left Egypt, but a lot of them act like they were still slaves, and they got that's why they had to wander in the desert. They still long for the meats and the pleasures of Egypt when things went bad. And just because things are bad for you, it doesn't mean you have to always blame it on the white man. You can you have education, you have your right mind, you have freedom, you have all those things which can make you successful. And that to me, along with some pretty cool barbecues and food is what we're to remember on Juneteenth. God bless you. Bye-bye now.